Hello, everyone, and welcome. We're so happy you're joining us today for this virtual workshop made possible thanks to our partners at Lowe's. Lowe's has been a USO partner for more than 10 years, and this is the third year in a row we're bringing these DIY workshops to the military community around the world. My name is Elizabeth Lee, and I'm a 12-year Army spouse and a program manager on the USO military spouse team. Brian Levy is a store manager in North Carolina, and he's also a Navy veteran. Brian has been with Lowe's for over 20 years and will be sharing his DIY expertise from the Lowe's studio today, along with Jacqueline Boyle, an Army spouse and Lowe's talent acquisition specialist. Brian and Jacqueline will be working together to demonstrate today's projects to help make your house a home after a PCS. Brian, I'll pass it over to you. Hey, good afternoon, good morning, good, morning, good evening, good overnight to uh, wherever you are in the world. So. Uh... You know, welcome to uh, the Lowe's workshop today. My name is uh, Brian Levy. I'm the store manager uh, of store here in Troutman, North Carolina. But we're coming to you live from our studios here, our Lowe's studios in Mooresville, North Carolina. So uh, really glad to be a part of this today. And we're going to uh, have a great workshop where we're going to get you ready now that you have PCS into your new home. We're going to help you make that house a home. And we're going to eliminate some of that stress. I understand uh, myself being a, a veteran. And then Jacqueline as well, being a, a, an army spouse, all these moves you go through, well, we're gonna help you at least take some of the stress out of making that house a home. So I welcome everyone. Please again, get in the chat box. I understand we have a potential watch party going on at a USO center uh, up in Washington. So I'd definitely love to hear that, uh, but really just wanna see where, uh, where around the world we are. We've seen some from Texas, we see some Louisiana, Virginia, places like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to uh, Jacqueline Boyle. So Jacqueline Boyle, welcome to uh, the workshop here. So yes. tell me a about yourself. Awesome, thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Jacqueline Boyle. I have been with Lowe's for about a year and a half and I'm currently a talent acquisition specialist with University Recruiting. I'm also a military spouse. My husband is uh, in the army and stationed at Fort Bragg. So we live in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh, it's our third duty station together. And uh, we have a little dog and uh, we have our first little one on the way as well. So that's very exciting. Um, and again, welcome to our DIY workshop. We're so happy to have you here. Uh, Lowe's and the USO have a 10 plus year history together, focusing on supporting the military community, honoring our veterans and assisting causes like workforce development and affordable housing. We are incredibly excited to bring these virtual workshops to all USO centers worldwide. On behalf of our nearly 20,000 veterans, welcome to our post-PCS DIY workshop. So definitely glad to, uh, to have you here with us today. So uh, once again, Jacqueline, congratulations on your, uh, Thank you. your upcoming baby. So uh, glad to have you here as well. No, you know, Army, Navy, we might have a little Army, <laughs> Navy banter going here a little bit, but uh, really, uh, you know, I'm really proud to work for this company because of the outreach that we have for the USO. And then I think about the impact that the USO had on me throughout my military career as well. So uh, for me, giving back to uh, two great organizations um, that helped me through uh, my personal life, whether in the military or in Lowe's, and uh, being able to give back to the military community. So, uh, you know, our post-PCS workshop today um, is going to be covering some great topics such as uh, painting an accent wall, so uh, hanging curtains, uh, hanging pictures, and then hanging uh, some closet organization. So really just some tips to get that house into a home and really uh, add your touch to it. So we understand base housing, right? Moving into base housing, the plain walls and all that. And you really wanna to try to make it that house a home. So pretty excited about that today. So uh, once again, if, as we go through this, I remind everyone to please let us know uh, as, you, as you have questions. Uh, we have a live prompt here letting us know as these questions come through. So as we're going through in one of the clinics, you, you have a question or one of the parts of the workshop where you have a question, just chat it out to us. Uh, we have some uh, more folks coming in from Texas. We have Dover, Delaware. We have West Monroe, Louisiana, Phoenix, Arizona, Nashville, Tennessee, Tyndall Air Force Base in Panama City, Florida, Fort Hood, Texas, Fairfax, Virginia, Fort Meade, Maryland, Milton, Florida, Hawaii, Alaska. We have one from Bavaria, Germany. Germany. That's so awesome. that is, uh, that's awesome. That's, uh, you're up really late at night to, uh, to yeah. uh, watch this workshop, but, um, you know, really proud of what, um, the military spouses and our veterans do uh, for uh, for us. So, uh, Jacqueline, are you ready to kick this workshop off? Yeah, let's do it. So let's let's talk about this for a moment. So you know, you move into that new home, and all the walls are plain, right? So uh, you you don't want to start thinking about accent walls, right, Jacqueline? So what would you, 
what would you use an accent wall in, uh, in your home? Think about the nursery coming up, right? What would you use an accent wall for in your home? Uh, just any space that needs a little brightening up um, on base or off base. We've always lived off base, but as renters, so it is very um, white and beige. And so um, just a really bright wall like you see here would be really awesome, uh, you know, to have something a little bit more interesting to look at. So I think about that nursery, right, with the crib. Are we talking a blue wall or a pink wall? Oh, we got a pink wall coming. Oh, see, see, <laughs> so uh, we, that's, that's exactly the type of things we're talking about. So uh, We'll go ahead and, and talk about the wall that we have here uh, in the studio. So uh, for time's sake, uh, we weren't able to really go through and paint this, but uh, one of my associates at the store, uh, Missy, uh, did an outstanding job demonstrating different techniques of an accent wall. So, you know, the one thing is, is you could do a plain color, um, you could, or you could do what you can see is different accents. So what she did is she did different accent walls you could do, with, without just having just plain paint. And it's really done really with the magic of paint and a roll of painter's tape. So that roll of painter's tape, um, you, you definitely wanna make sure that you get the ones that say sharp lines, because what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna use the painter's tape and create a pattern on the wall that you wanna cover up. So in this particular instance, she covered up the white and painted this teal you can do the same as well. So you can do whatever pattern. We gave you a couple of examples here uh, to give you a different variation of just a plain colored wall that you could do. You know, I've seen some other things where people, you know, box out what looks like a window and uh, did a little design in a, in a wall and actually did like an outdoor design. So I, there's so many different things you can do, but literally all you're doing is you take that painter's tape and you start marking off the areas that you don't, that you, the design that you want to do. So in this particular case, she marked this off and then took another roll of tape, marked that off, took another roll of tape, mark, and then just painted over it with that teal color. So the one thing you need to do is, you know, uh, don't want to wait until the paint dries to remove that tape. You definitely want to pull that tape off as the paint is wet, because as you do it, if you let it dry, what's going to happen is that tape is going to start peeling away all that paint that you just painted on the wall. So as it's wet, you peel that tape off and you'll start to get these sharp lines. So uh, a really, uh, really neat technique to give you uh, some accent walls around the home. You know, you think about it, you can do this in your living room, you can do it in your kids' rooms, the dining room, upcoming nursery, uh, whatever the case may be. But it just gives you a different variation from just paint on the wall. So that is a uh, blue painter's tape, the sharp lines version. So when you're thinking about painting, uh, you know, you definitely want to make sure you think about safety, right? So if you are painting, you want to make sure you have goggles. You want to make sure you have a mask. You can also use such things to protect that new floor uh, in your home. So have rolled plastic, have canvas covers, those type of things to protect the walls as you paint. Um, painter's tape as well is you can use that to potentially, if you're not, if you're a uh, average painter like myself or even less uh, like myself, uh, use that painter's tape to block off anything that you don't want to paint with that color, which is what we had done when we painted this. Keep in mind, if you're going to tape off any molding, any uh, doors, any electrical outlets, anything like that, be sure that you peel it off on the walls while it's wet, and then uh, you won't have any issues with uh, the paint sticking. So if you were looking at this, Jacqueline, what do you think about this type of accent wall? I love the, the chevron look. That's, uh, that's probably something I would do. A lot of military uh, in the chevrons, right? And a lot of rank. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a subconscious thing. <laughs> I know the Navy's full of chevrons, so I was glad to hear that. But so were the other branches as well. But uh, yeah, definitely uh, it's different things you can do. So, um, you know, keep in mind uh, as we roll through this, uh, if you have any questions about different techniques or different things that we're discussing, please get into that chat box and uh, put those questions out as we'll answer them as they come in. So. Um, so now we have the accent wall painted and we're going to transition into creating a little privacy in the home. Uh, and that is, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put up a curtain rod. So Jacqueline, if you, uh, want to start going through the process of putting up that curtain rod. Yes. Yeah, so you can get a kit, um, at your local Lowe's that has everything that you need in it. So it'll have the rods and, um, 
it's called the hooks, <laughs> bracket. <laughs> the bracket, um, the screws that you need, and even these cool little covers that will cover up, um, you know, the head of the screw once it's in there. So I'm going to leave the drilling to Brian. So which, you know, so each one of these kits, they come with a plastic anchor and they come with a screw. So the plastic anchor is, is meant to help keep the curtain rod actually in the wall. So you think about kids, you think about pets, you even think about yourself. Uh, if you just put a screw straight into drywall, uh, it most likely will not stay in the wall. So most of these curtain rods, which we have in the store, uh, come with an anchor. So with that anchor, you need to use a drill bit. That's, and most of the times the, the instructions will tell you what size drill bit to use, but you wanna, wanna use a drill bit that's actually just a little bit smaller than the anchor itself. Because what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be creating a hole and then hammering that anchor in. So I'll tell you a little bit behind the scenes, as you put that anchor in and you put the screw in, these legs start spreading out and it allows the curtain rod to stay into the wall. So uh, Jacqueline's gonna tell me where she wants to put this curtain rod as I will uh, there you come go. in behind and create the, the holes that she needs. So we have an example of a small window here. Obviously um, you may have bigger ones, but you may have a small one in a smaller room, laundry room or bathroom uh, where you certainly do want privacy. Um, so we just got a small kit and first you just wanna decide um, how far you want it out on either side from your window, also how much higher above the window you want it, and then uh, where your curtain is going to land at the bottom. So we already kind of pre-measured it, but um, just right in the middle there from the top. So ideally, most likely in most homes, you'll have a stud right here where this wall is, and you wanna to try to get that anchor or that bracket on the stud. But in this particular case, we're gonna put it a little bit offset to the side, and this is where I'll have to use those anchors. So a uh, question we have, should you paint the inside of kitchen cabinets and drawers? So I would not recommend painting the inside of kitchen cabinet and drawers unless the kitchen cabinet has a glass front on it and you're looking for that look, you know, if you put glasses in there, um, but you really wanna just focus on painting the outside of uh, kitchen cabinets and drawers. So there's different things you can do in drawers. You can put the liners in there. Uh, there's different things you can do to help protect uh, your silverware, your, your plates and stuff like that. But more importantly, also protect the cabinets and the drawers that, uh, of the place you just moved into. I have seen people put wallpaper inside their kitchen cabinets or drawers. So all I'm doing here is we, we have our bracket placement. Uh, this is where Jacqueline earlier told me where she wanted to put this bracket. Uh, so all you're doing is you're, you're marking the two holes of where you want the bracket to go. So in this particular case, we're gonna put it right here offset with the window. So you take your pencil and you mark your areas. These are your two drilling points of where you're gonna be putting these anchors in. So then you take your drill with that bit that you had and you create a hole for that anchor. And all you have to do is the top hole and then the bottom one two simple holes for you to get yourself ready to hang the curtain rods. So you don't necessarily, like I said, if you're, if, you're, if you're hitting a stud behind the wall and you'll know right away, when you go to drill in, you'll feel some resistance and you'll actually have to put some pressure behind. That means you're hitting a stud behind the wall. But if it goes straight through, as soon as you punch through and the drill pushes right through, you're not on a stud. So with that being said, take your anchor, and you go into your first hole. So it's gonna look just like that. And if you can't push it in with your finger, you can then use a hammer to lightly tap it in. And you do the same on both. And drywall should be strong enough, correct? You don't have to find a stud? No, with these anchors, you do not have to find a stud. And that's what makes these anchors really helpful because you do not need to find that stuff. So you then take your bracket and you only have to do the top screw in this particular set first. So, and I'll show you why in a second. So I'm gonna put that top screw in and all you do is you take a regular, whatever drive bit you have on the screw and you put that screw 
in the hole, but not all the way. And this is why I'm telling you only put the top one in because the brackets like this one, for instance, allow you to put it in. Let's see, I put it too tight. Allow you to put it in and set the bracket in place. Once you do that, you then put the bottom screw in to give you that extra support. And then you would screw in the top one. In this particular case, I don't have an extension on this drill, uh, but you wanna make sure that you screw in that top one as well. And then on the other side, gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put that top screw in. Too far again. And then the bottom one goes in as well. Now I won't demo it for you, but uh, there is quite a bit of strength that those anchors have. So if you do happen to pull on the curtain, the kids pull on the curtain, whatever may happen, uh, it will give you that support that you need uh, for holding up that curtain rod. So all right. Now it's time. So we just took this out of the package. It's a little bit wrinkled, but you can iron these. Oops. There you have it. Look Perfect. <laughs> so you can do the same with, uh, and for time's sake, we couldn't do it today, but you could do the same with mini blinds, um, with shades. Uh, those type of things make sure you follow the directions that are in the pack because with mini blinds a lot of times you mount them inside of the window frame shades go over the top there's so many different things you could do um, but this is one of the first steps you do to give yourself some privacy uh, obviously during the day and then uh, at, in the evening as well so if you install an anchor in the wrong place what is the best way to remove it so the best way to remove it i'll take this apart real quick i'll show you So you can, and I don't have a pair of pliers right now, but you can just start the screw into the anchor and get a pair of pliers and pull it out. But I, I can tell you that you're going to have a hole, which, uh, by the way, the one thing that we forgot to reference was talking about a hole uh, in the last workshop we did, which is the, the pre-PCS workshop, we actually did a workshop on how to repair holes in the wall. So uh, those door openings, somebody slams a door, somebody kids around the house and they, they knock a hole in the wall. Um, they're actually on that last workshop we did and I go to the USO, which, what is the site, Jack? Uh, USO.org slash MVP. To go back and reference that. So we even talk about a California patch where you could plug a hole that's, you know, four, five, six inches, um, reference that, but same you could do with that, that as well. Just get some spackle if you're going to relocate that. If you make the hole too big, don't worry. Uh, there are plenty of repair tips and, and tricks out there to help you uh, get through and fix that drywall. So great question. So keep in mind, keep those questions coming as we go through this clinic, uh, as we go through this workshop. So I want to put the, oh, wait, let me put the bracket back up. Now, what about tie? What about pullbacks, Jacqueline? What if they want to put a pullback? What if they don't want the curtain to just lay flat? Uh, kind of the same process, yeah? It is. You so. buy a kit with the hook and it'll come with the, the screws that you need to, to get it in there. So if you, and I know this is a one curtain, but let's say you put two curtains on here and you want to have a pullback. You know, that's the style where you have a, a clip right here or you clip it to the wall. You use the same process that you, we just use with the anchors and it'll give you a good secure hold into the wall with the, with the curtain. So um, really, uh, Anything else on hanging a curtain or painting an accent wall? I think that's it. All right. So uh, at this point, I'm going to uh, bring in an assistant. So we have Mike Piper, uh, who is with our Lowe's Military Affairs. Uh, he is also an Air Force veteran. So uh, definitely welcome, Mike, uh, to the stage. So uh, we now have Army, Navy, and Air Force. <laughs> uh, we're just missing the Marines and the Coast Guard. So, uh, but uh, Mike, appreciate your help on uh, helping me spin this thing around.
All right. Everybody give Mike a round of applause. Great job, Mike. Thanks for your help. Uh, go Air Force. Um, so uh, just uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to transition this clinic into talking about hanging pictures and uh, talking about that famous closet organization, garage organization, or pantry organization. So uh, we have some pictures here that Jacqueline personally chose <laughs> off my aisles in my store um, from Lowe's. So uh, Jacqueline, you want to kind of talk about picture hanging and how important that is to moving into that home and making that house a home? Yeah, no, I think we all have nice home decor items, either um, like we're going to show you here, just, um, you know, things you can pick up at the store or picture frames with family pictures. Um, I did pick these. I got to pick these. That was very fun. Um, so of course, this is kind of a, a baby girl themed one. So we'll just start there. Um, and where, here we go. This was new to me today, um, which is an amazing little device here. Let's see what it's called. 3M claw drywall picture hangers. So this doesn't require any equipment besides the actual hanger. And it has two kind of hooks in the back and you just find the spot where you want it. So where are you gonna, where, where do you wanna put this? We have pre-picked our spot right there. Yeah, so the cool thing about this 3M claw is it's gonna make it real easy for you to find the spot on where on the wall that you want to put this. So gone are the days of having to mark the wall or you know have somebody up here or measuring. Now with this particular uh, hanging device, what you do is at the center of this V, upside down V is where the screw is going to go. So in this particular picture, we want it to go right there, right? So we easily peel off the backer on it, stick it on the picture, and this is called the 3M claw, stick it on the picture wherever the screw will be going through that V on that, on that spot. And now you pull the other adhesive off. Should have had you do this with fingernails. So I'll be honest though, I cheated earlier and did it without this part. So you did. <laughs> and it's not. You want me to check? Yes. I think my fingers mangled that one. Oh, this is on there tight, there you go. There we go, see? All right, so now what you do is, where do you want it, Jacqueline? You want right. it right here? Give it a little pressure. And now I messed it up. I did it earlier without that. I, know I don't did. even I understand. I know you did, all right, so. <laughs> For time saving, what that is, is that if this worked properly, it would have sat right there like it should have if my fingers didn't wear out the adhesive on the, on the glue. And now what you have is a spot to where you are gonna put a dot. So right where that V is, is where you're gonna put a dot. You can peel that off. You now have this dot right here and I'm gonna circle it just for workshop sake. You don't wanna do that at home. Um, so now you have that spot, Jacqueline. Show them how easy it is to put the 3M claw. So, so now I understand. For precision at home, you may want to use that. Obviously, this is just a sample wall. Um, so then you just put it, put the claws into the wall, and you just press it in. And that is it. Look you could that. probably gently hammer if you like, but um, it goes in very easily without that. And then you just hang your picture right on the hook. And then you can use a level to make sure that it's level. We have a big one here. Let's see. There we go. So that is called the, the 3M claw, the drywall picture hangers. Uh, it does, this particular claw holds up to 15 pounds, but we actually have more in the store that'll hold even more weight. Obviously with these pictures, uh, definitely not weighing 15 pounds, but you think about heavy mirrors, you think about heavy <clears throat> pictures and stuff like that. Uh, definitely a, a great way for you to go ahead and hang that picture on the wall and not uh, really make a bunch of holes in the wall. So, all right, so now we use the 3M claw. What's what's next, Jeff? We have another way to hang pictures um, with this teeny little, is this called a bracket as well? That's called a, a hook, hanger. a picture hanger <laughs> um, and a little, uh, just a little nail. So we got it out of this uh, multi-kit, which is really awesome because there's multiple different sizes. As military families, we move a lot. So you may have different things, different needs, um, and this can move with you to several different homes. 
Uh, so you just need the size that you want and you do need a hammer for this one. And I do have a pre-pick spot here that I'm gonna cheat and use. So you just put it in there and the nail does go in at an angle. So make sure it goes at an angle so that the hook is flush with the wall. Just gently tap it in there with the hammer. And, oh, we forgot that trick. I'll show that in a second. And then again, just hang it on there. Make sure it is level. You can also use the level to make sure your pictures are level with one another if that's how you choose. Ours didn't work out that way, but that's okay. And then, um, so we had another trick that we had a friend show us before the show. If you have a picture frame that has multiple brackets, ours that we picked all just happen to have just the single one in the middle. But if you need to make two holes in the wall, just to make sure that they are precise, you can stick a piece of tape on the back. And then with like a pen or a little knife or something, just punch a hole, you know, say it's here and then here. And then you would take the tape, put it in the wall and punch the same holes. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So <laughs> let, let me give you another visual. So think about those pictures that you have that are two and three hooks wide. You know, the old, the old way would you have to get somebody else to help it and you try to mark where the hooks are, where the brackets are, or you're trying to visualize where it is. Well, man, what a great trick to get in there. Use that piece of tape like Jacqueline did. So I'm gonna have you do it again just to show them one more time. So we're gonna say, for instance, that we have a hook here and we have a hook here. So show them what they need to do. So if it was there, it would be easier to punch a hole because usually we'll say there, we'll say there. And then you can take it off. Make sure the hole is punched through in your spots. Hang it up and then mark it, mark it. And then you just got two little tiny dots to work with Look that, that are gonna line up perfectly. What a, what a, great, what a great trick that is. Uh, very easy way to hang a picture. So uh, you wanna hang the third picture up? I mean, we gotta, we gotta complete it. Yeah, I here. think we do it the same way. We'll use, no, not this one. We'll use the 3M claw again. Okay. All right. My favorite. So uh, in this kit, uh, there are a couple other things in here. So uh, there is a roll of wire uh, that you can use. So uh, if you happen to have a picture where the hooks are on the sides, um, you can hang a wire across and have a one anchor point or a two anchor point, depending upon how big the picture is. Uh, but in that kit, you have that uh, as well as you think about those bigger pictures. Well, Jacqueline has an anchor uh, that she used that was small, but then you have one that's uh, really large for those really large pictures uh, inside of here are the bigger screw, the bigger nails that you would use. Um, so it's just, you know, just some little things you can do to make that house a home, put those family pictures up, put uh, pictures of the Navy up, you know, in the, in the military wall, in the military room, uh, <laughs> in the nursery, all the nursery pictures up. So, uh, you know, some great techniques to, uh, to hang a picture. So um, the question we came in is how can I hang a heavy picture? So we actually in the store, we have uh, heavy mirror kits, heavy picture kits uh, that allow you to do a multi-point attachment. You don't wanna just use one hook for a heavy picture. Um, so we actually have ones that have mounts that go into the wall, a strong mount to allow you to go in and, and hang that, that heavy picture on the wall. You know, you gotta be careful with the kids, right? Uh, even with us in the house, you know, you don't want any of those heavy mirrors or heavy pictures to come down. So make sure it is a heavy mirror or heavy picture kit and it'll actually give you the directions and show you everything you need to do to have multi-points of attachment to that wall so it doesn't come off. So good question. Uh, keep those questions rolling through uh, in the chat. So um, the third thing we're gonna, the fourth thing we're gonna cover now is a uh, closet organization, right? Unless you wanna okay. hang that picture. You wanna hang that picture? Sure. Yeah, go right ahead. Can I cheat again? You can do whatever, whatever <laughs> you wanna do. So she's using the, the 3M claw because she really likes that. 
Oh my gosh. No need for a hammer. No need for anything except the claw itself. There we go. Look at that. I'll make sure. Perfect. So the one thing I will tell you about the claw is, uh, you know, you think about removal, right? Uh, it's real easy. Uh, all you have to do is just pop that thing back out and it comes right back out of the hole. So actually what it has is some bent little metal pieces that actually hold onto the drywall, which gives it that strength. Um, but if you have, you think about a nail hole versus the little holes that the claw has. So uh, really, uh, really some uh, neat techniques to hang pictures with. So, oh, let me, I don't want to mess up your wall. Jack. <laughs> so uh, I'll put it back up. If it's not level, you can go ahead and Thank remind you. me of that. Um, so uh, that's some basic pictures on, or uh, some basic techniques on hanging pictures. So the last thing we're going to talk about uh, is closet organization. Now this can work in your closet. It can work in your pantry. It can work in your craft room. It can work in your garage, your basement, whatever the case may be. Um, but we all have those areas that uh, we need some additional shelves, right? Some additional storage um, and different ways to, to store product or groceries or whatever the case may be in the pantry. Yeah. So what we have here is uh, it is a adjustable shelving system made by Closet Made. It's uh, called a self track. So what we have in the studio here uh, is a closet kit. Um, so what the closet kit is allowing us to do is to have pretty much a basic kit from a four to six foot wide space to create shelves and create closet rods um, and create that storage area that you may need. So uh, there's many different variations you can do uh, with these closet kits, but more importantly, um, we're gonna demonstrate here, uh, we're gonna set up uh, two, pretty much three shelves total, just to give you a basic understanding of it. Um, but it does give you the ability to uh, add that additional storage and organization to your closet. So um, what we did here first is, couple things in any closet space or wall that you're going to be putting this system on uh, there's a couple different things you can do you could either find the stud um, so what we mean by the stud is the piece of wood behind the drywall that is the ideal installation process with the shelving kit is to find that stud um, so at the store we have stud finders so what it really allows you to do is when you hold it up to the wall, find where the stud is in your wall. In that particular case, in our demo, I have a stud right here. And then I come across and I have a stud right here. So these stud finders are really handy. You know, I think back to when I was growing up and my grandparents and my parents used to use a way to try to find the stud and they're trying to listen for that solid hit. Uh, but now we have the tools in our, at our grasp that allow us to quickly identify where a stud is. So when you do that, um, you wanna start visualizing where the studs are in your closet. So you get beginning of the stud, the end of the stud, and you wanna to try to get right in the middle. So just mark where that stud is. right there. You want to mark the middle of that stud. So the reason why this is important is because there's a couple things we're going to be doing. Now for our, for our clinic here, we actually, with our setup with the window on the other side, we didn't have the ideal setup of studs. But to start off this, this system, you actually have to start off with this shelf rack or the header. So for the header, it actually, they're pre-drilled at 16 inches for your studs. For this particular case, I didn't have a stud. So what I used, just like we did for the pictures or the uh, curtain rod, I used the same thing, I used anchors. So the same process, you can use the anchors to go in here to spread and give that, that um, durability to hold it up on the drywall. Another thing you can also use as well, um, you see these a lot in ceilings and stuff like that, are these anchors. Now this all comes in the kit, so it gives you all the tools you need, whether to put into a stud, put it into a, a, a plain drywall, but you drill the hole and then, actually, I'll let me demo this. Can you um, load me up with a big drill bit real quick? So what this Biggest does one. is it allows you to 
drill a big hole in the wall. So for time's sake and for our workshop's sake, I'm just gonna drill it right here. So I drilled the hole in the wall, which I don't have the right drill bit right now, but you wanna try to get that hole big enough to get this in there. So drill it a little bit bigger. Just enough to be able to get this inside. So really what's gonna happen is this anchor is gonna go into the wall and we're gonna start screwing it to where we're gonna start bringing this up against the wall and create an anchor point. So there's a question, is there a standard difference between studs and homes or is every home different? So the standard building code is 16 inches. Um, some homes have 20, um, but you can't fully guarantee that, you know, that it's gonna be truly 16 inches. So, or, 16 or 20. So most homes are 16. Some of the older homes have 20, um, but definitely recommend that uh, with that stud finder, you'd be able to help find where those studs are. So I've now put this anchor into the wall. And then now that it's in there, you want to pull out on it just a little bit and start tightening it down and watch what happens. It actually pulls itself into the wall. So what'll happen is it starts pruing, pulling the screw into the wall and it'll help attach whatever you're trying to brill it, whether it's a bracket, whatever the case may be, it helps attach that to the wall. So I could have done that up here. In this particular case, I use the anchors, but it gives it a strong hold. Like you can't pull that out because that, that metal piece spread behind and it really gave it that support. So back to our demo here. So I put the shelf rack up. So with this shelf rack now, in this particular workshop, we're gonna use just two rails and I'm gonna use those studs as my guide on where to put these rails. So once you put that header shelf up, screw that one in and off. All right, so we're gonna kind of place it right over where that line was. And the reason why this is important is because you're now gonna use these as the main support for your shelves that you're gonna add in your, in your whatever, wherever you're putting the shelving. So this is gonna give you a lot of support uh, because you'll not only have these anchored in the drywall, these are gonna be running down the studs. But if you cannot find the studs or you don't have the ability to attach those to the studs, you could use the same process for these holes and that's using the other type of anchors. So once you find that stud, let's get these screws right here. You can then now start attaching these support arms to the studs. So you find there's a pre-drilled hole right here and I'm just gonna, It is in the stud. That is yeah. not going anywhere. So keep in mind, I identified where the stud was and I'm gonna run these rails right down the stud. So same thing here, saw where I made my mark earlier. I'm gonna go right in the center of that and get a hold of that stud. That is not going anywhere. <laughs> Do the same thing here. So here's, here's what the, the great thing is about that. Now there, there are other kits out there to where it doesn't use this racking system. And it's perfectly fine to use those. Um, sometimes they come in and the wire shelving looks just like this and you're using a system of brackets to come in and uh, you can put them wherever you want uh, on your wall. Uh, I'm demoing this because what this gives you the ability to do is let's say for instance, Jacqueline's gonna come in and she says, you know what? I wanna put this shelf, my top shelf, using these brackets that also came in the kit. I'd like it to be right there, right? So her and her husband put this shelf up. 
they get it in their closet. And guess what? They quickly realize that it's not. not going, there you go. They quickly realize that guess what? This is not the height that they wanted. So they want to be able to go a little bit lower. Well, now with this racking system, they have the ability to move this shelf down here. Look how easy that is. Now I had it personally with myself a couple of years ago in a house where I put it in a pantry. I put the shelves up. We didn't like how uh, the bottom shelf stored the cereal boxes. So guess what I did? I easily pulled the, the shelves out and moved the shelves to the height that we wanted. So, you know, the other kits will work. But the thing about this, and you think about the future and different things you can do, uh, it has, gives you the ability to move that shelf up and down. How do I check if there are any electrical circuits or wires in the wall? So most wires, if they're done by code, are set back from the studs to prevent you from drilling back there. Now, however, there are, we do have a device in the store that allows you to see exactly where the electrical wires are. Um, it'll actually sense where there is electricity going through. So highly recommend, like in this particular case, I didn't talk about it because we don't have an outlet, but that's a great question. Um, most, most wires are set to where it's attached to a stud and behind far enough where you're gonna be doing any work. However, be safe, figure out where the wires are in the wall, especially if there was an outlet right here, I'd wanna know if there's any wires uh, in the wall. So good question. Um, so we have this shelf here. So if you have, You want to make this into a garment rack, right? You want to hang those clothes. You have the ability to use this system to create a garment rack. And I'll show you how to do it. It'll cooperate with me. Does it go the other way? something. No, I'm missing something. There we go. I did. You were right. I had it the wrong way. Go ahead. Laugh at me now. I'm <laughs> I just looked at the picture. Yep. So what this does now is it allows you to create a hanging rod for whatever shelves you put up. So great, op great opportunity for you to organize clothes and stuff like that. It allows you to create, able to create that additional coat hanging rod that you might need uh, in a shelf. It'd be awesome for a laundry room. Yes, it would actually. Do a, do a little laundry setup. So yeah, lastly, close here. Close here. so you think about all the shoes, right? You're trying to figure out ways to organize the shoes, especially if you have a smaller closet. Well, there is a shoe shelf that we carry that allows you to go in here with this same process. and create a shoe shelf out of 45. Whoop, I have that upside down. <laughs> Jacqueline, you gotta help me with these type of things. I was just wondering about this will stop your the shoes. shoes falling yeah. Off. So now you have the ability to store shoes up here and then you also have the ability to store shoes down there. So that is a shoe shelf kit that's available for this. Now we have shelf kits that are four feet wide, six feet wide. They even go longer than that, but this gives you the versatility to move shelves as you want to adjust them. But also with this setup, it is very secure in the wall. So you can feel safe putting some weight on these shelves and not having anything collapse. So uh, really Jacqueline, we, uh, we did a lot today, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is awesome. Cause especially, you know, in those rental properties, you do get decent closet space in some of them, but they're not always so efficient because there'll just be a wide open closet, but you can add as many shelves as you want. That's awesome. So, you know, one other thing you think about uh, making your house a home, uh, some other products that we carry uh, at Lowe's are, uh, we carry couches, we carry furniture, uh, we carry chairs, we carry tables. Uh, we also have mattresses in the store as well, uh, as well as pictures, um, you know, curtains, mm -hmm. uh, all these different things to make your house a home. So uh, you can go buy your local Lowe's. Uh, actually, uh, Jacqueline, you were sitting in that chair a little earlier, <laughs> how comfortable it was. Yes. Looks like I got a sale from Jacqueline, but uh, really just, um, you know, you have these abilities to help you make that house a home. So uh, 
you know, we, we, uh, we definitely uh, appreciate doing this workshop today. So Jacqueline, what, uh, oh, I got a question. So if you want to add a kitchen backsplash and paint the outside of the cabinets, which one should you do first? So you want to paint the cabinets first um, because sometimes as you're painting the outside of the cabinets, you might get stuff on the wall and you might get stuff, you know, um, on the tile. So to make it easier on yourself, you want to do everything with the cabinets first and then do the backsplash last. That will allow you to save uh, any overflow uh, with paint on the backsplash or anything like that. So great question. So keep those questions coming. We're going to stay, uh, we're going to stay on here for a few more minutes and be answering the questions. Um, but really, Jacqueline, um, appreciate you, uh, your help today and uh, being a part of this, being my co-host on, uh, on this great workshop and, and really uh, touching all parts of the world. Love here in Germany. So uh, do we have any others from across the world? So we want to know, put in the chat where you are. Uh, we would love to hear uh, where you are. So how can I find the products used today? So uh, you can find them uh, on Lowe's.com or in your local Lowe's store. We have them all uh, available for you. Um, you can also go into, there's some how-tos in there on how you go in and can do some of these projects like that, such as closet organization, such as picture hanging. We do have all those available uh, on Lowe's.com. So and, it, and the app too, right? Oh, and the app. Yes, I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. uh, great tool to have. So how do you remove paint from steel? So uh, we actually have some some goof off and there's other chemicals we have in the store in our paint departments to be able to help you remove uh, that paint from steel. So uh, what would these work, would these anchors work for floating shelves too? Yes, they would. Um, those, those anchors are pretty versatile and you can pretty much use them wherever uh, you need to put your shelves up. So all good questions. So think about the impact that, that uh, the military has uh, on us and uh, myself personally, couldn't be more proud to be a veteran, could be more proud to, to have the spouses, the USO, everybody be involved to uh, support this, uh, our military and uh, be a part of uh, something bigger. So uh, Jacqueline, appreciate your time today. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I, uh, I learned a ton in our last workshop and I learned a ton today. So I'll use a lot of these things I learned myself. And most importantly, uh, at this point, we'd like to welcome you home. Uh, so uh, congratulations uh, on your move. And uh, hopefully this helped remove some of the stress that you have of, uh, of moving into that new home. Notice I said home now because before we were talking about it at a house, now it's your home. So uh, appreciate being a part of this today. Jacqueline, <laughs> go Navy. Thank you for having me. Go Army. Oh, I see that. So uh, <laughs> appreciate that today. So keep the chat coming. Uh, we're going to stay on for a few more minutes and uh, have those questions coming through. But thank you for your time today. Thank you for what you do. Uh, for our country and our military. And uh, thank you to the USO and uh, Lowe's for this opportunity today. So I uh, hope everybody has a great day. Thank you.